The Steelers have a new receivers coach, Zach Azani, from the Jets and also the Broncos. What does he bring to the table to work with Johnson and Pickens? All that here and more on the Locked On Steelers podcast, the Friday episode with Chris Carter and Jenna Harner. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things of the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show in your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase on Game Time. As I said before, we're joined by Jenna Harner. She joins us from Channel 11 Studios, WPXI in Pittsburgh. Uh, Jenna, we literally were about to record this uh, this episode on Thursday for our Friday episode. And all of a sudden, breaking news, Jeremy Fowler, BSBN, tweets out, Zach Azani is the new Steelers wide receivers coach coming by way of the Jets for just the past year. But for the five years before that, he was with the Broncos uh, and it's an interesting move here a little bit different of a pace than I think than what a lot of people were looking at where like Heinz Ward or a college coach this guy comes with a lot of NFL experience and it's I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what the results are because this is still a very fresh hire so I, I'm interested to see your response to just this move yeah, no, I'm really intrigued by it because this is a name where you look at and you're like, wait a second, you know, obviously some of the not, you know, top offensive coordinators, top defensive coordinator names are the ones that you see all the time. So you deep dive, you find a little bit out about this guy, you do some research, but he's worked with a lot of receivers throughout his year, I will, his time. I want to make sure I have all this correctly because he's been working with receivers. Let me just pull that up uh, for the last 26 years. So uh, he's been doing this for a while. It's been uh, six seasons, last season with the Jets, of course, six seasons before that with Denver, a year before that in Chicago, and then 18 years at the collegiate level. So the guy's been in the NFL for a little bit. Something really intriguing, though, about him is is he in 2020 worked with a very, very, very young Mm -hmm. Broncos receiving core, which I think has kind of been a big factor in this hire. If I was the Steelers looking at a guy that has had experience working with younger receivers. I mean, we know some of the discontent that was in that room throughout the year with guys like George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, just in the ways that they weren't getting the ball early on and throughout the season, as we saw, but I I'm very intrigued to see the, the, the why behind the decision of why um, they felt like Azani was kind of the guy, why the Steelers felt like he was um, the guy that they wanted to bring in in this role. Because, again, this is a guy who has a lot of experience. So it feels on paper, it looks you're like, all right, this checks off a lot of boxes here that I think the Steelers were looking to check off when it come, when it came to this hire. Absolutely. And that's part of the, um, the, the things that are interesting here is that it's a different pace than what I think a lot of people are looking at. But experience was a, has been a big factor in the OC search. So it makes sense that it would be a big factor in the wide receiver search. And it's important to note that in his history, like, you know, you talked about the 2020 season when they lost Cortland Sutton. In, uh, in in Denver, they had a very young receiver score, and he kept that group together. He's yeah. also gotten really good production out of multiple players, including Cortland Sutton, who under his watch be- earned a Pro Bowl bid. And he's been and he developed into a guy that made a lot of money in the NFL. Also, a, a, a late I think he was actually undrafted. Tim Patrick, a guy mm-hmm. who was not looked at as a as, as a guy who was going to come into the NFL and make any noise. He became a solid, you know, secondary receiver uh, for, for the Broncos who earned a decent you know, veteran contract. So he's been known to work with both high level players and with lower drafted or undrafted players to develop them into good talent in an offense. And I think that that experience of working with different dynamics of players that can bring value to coaching wide receivers, especially when you got a veteran like Deontay Johnson, a young guy like Pickens, who's going into his third year and also potentially maybe even a player they draft this year. Cause a lot of people are saying the Steelers might take another wide receiver in the first four rounds somewhere. 
Yeah. And, and just back to the youth thing. And I know this seems like kind of, we're kind of keep coming back to this in this way. And this is the Jets website, of course. So you take things with a grain of salt. Of course, teams are going to write, um, you know, more speak more highly of their guys, of course. But um, he, Azani was instrumental in developing young guys. Yeah. First year receiver, Cortland Sutton, Deshaun Hamilton, Tim Patrick, and what they were able to do in those couple of years. So again, he has that experience working with those young players, which is going to be a massive, massive thing for a very young Steelers offense, a unit that we've talked about kind of throughout all this past season and even as you know the last couple weeks of the off season here just how young this offense is and how many steps a lot of those guys need to take when you bring in a guy like experience with the experience that Azani has I think that this is going to be potentially a really solid fit I'm going to be intrigued to kind of see how the guys in the room respond to him it's also interesting when you look at his history and how you know his tenure with the Broncos and what all happened there he was hired yeah. In, in the last year of Vance Joseph's head coaching tenure in 2018, he stayed on with Vic Fangio through all three years of that and then stayed on with Nate Hackett during that during that 2022 season where he got fired mid-year uh, and then went with Nate Hackett after that to, to you know to, to coach as you know with, with the with the uh, oh no he stayed he stayed on with Sean with Don Payton and then went to uh um no he went with Nate Hackett excuse me to the Jets. I'm reading yeah. two different histories here. But <laughs> he went with Nate Hackett to the Jets to stick sticking with him after that last year with the Broncos. But that's what I think is really interesting is that that's three head coaches. You he stuck with who felt like who one who hired him two who kept him on to the staff. And then a third who kept him on, you know, after a second head coach is fired, that's very rare for assistance. And, you know, that's a good sign. I'm not going to profess that. I know a whole lot about Azani and what he's like as a person and how he gets into his receivers or anything like that. But anytime an assistant coach sticks on through multiple head coach firings, it's be it is because they're doing something right and respected in an organization. Yeah, and I also wonder too how much pull Arthur Smith had in all of this because when I sat down with Steelers mm. President Arnie the second earlier this week, and I was asking him, you guys kind of envision making adding some new hires when it comes to positions that might not have been there before, passing game coordinator, things along those lines. One of the things he mentioned was, you know, they're kind of really still in conversations with all of this, and this is, you know, obviously happening less than 24 hours from when we're taping this. But um, he talked about the fact that Arthur Smith is going to have some say in who they bring in here so I, i'm intrigued when we do eventually potentially get to talk with smith just his thoughts on why bringing azani in because i feel like this is going to be a little bit more of you know his obviously mike tomlin has a lot of control here omar and art rooney have some say but i'm going to be intrigued to see how much pull arthur smith had when it came to azani as well absolutely i i do want to see what pull he he certainly had uh, to, to get there and assemble this staff. And also if there's more staff to be added because a wide receivers coach was the big thing. Cause that's, we knew that, uh, um, that they had, that there was an opening there, but will there be a pass game coordinator? Things like that are still, that still need to be answered. Um, you know, you know, about, for, by, by the Steelers organization. Uh, but a, another look here, uh, about, uh, just Az Azani's history, like you said, you know, he's been in the NFL since 2017 bears, Broncos, jets. He bounced around college football, uh, uh, SEC, Big Ten, moved around a, a, a lot. But you pointed at something out about a specific college player that he coached way back when. And I thought that was a very interesting thing that I've seen nobody else mention. No, I want to give a shout out to uh, our own Shelby Cassessi for this fun fact, but he worked with Antonio Brown when the two were at Central Michigan. Of course, Azani, Central Michigan grad, played there, but when AB was there back in, that would have been 07, is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah 07. Uh, he was his assistant head coach and wide receivers coach. So just, you know, all the little ties there. Naturally, there's always a Pittsburgh connection, always a Steelers connection, but I, I do find that uh, little anecdote there very interesting. Absolutely. And yeah, he was there from 07 to 09 at the exact same times that Azami was there. So uh, if he dealt with AB for three years, that says something, uh, you know, and uh, and college AB at that. That's actually very interesting. Um, but point being, this is a guy with experience. He's dealt with lots of different kinds of wide receivers, high paid, low paid, high drafted, low drafted, not drafted. And he's gotten respect in the NFL. So that is the kind of guy that the Steelers are bringing into the wide receiver room uh, to lead their group of guys. And we'll see how that continues to play out. There's a lot more things to talk about uh, with, with him that we'll get to as we learn more about him and hear more from the team moving forward. But we got to take some of your calls because you guys have been calling me lots of uh, voicemail voicemail questions in, on, our, on our Locked on Steelers hotline. We'll get to those questions in a minute here on the Locked on Steelers podcast right after this. 
But first, I want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from an, uh, from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as a quarter one uh, 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of three uh, first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Jenna Harner, breaking things down. It's time to go to the hotline. As always, we can you can give give in your calls to get your questions on the show by calling 412-223-6644. Leave your name, where you're from, and please keep your question under a minute, and we'll get your, your questions on the show. Uh, we got lots of questions, Jenna, that have been just been pouring in. But we'll lean on... Uh, a few things here that focus on the offensive side of the ball, especially after the news of the wide receiver coach. And I want to start off with this question that I think a lot of Steelers fans are kind of asking, asking right now. And it's about Mason Rudolph. Here's Kevin from North Carolina. Hey, Chris, this is Kevin from North Carolina. I don't know if it's just me, but um, I think that Mason Rudolph, since he's been there, has kind of been overlooked. Everyone is talking about um, pick it, pick it pick it but I never thought that Mason has ever got the chance that Pickett is um getting because I really thought Mason was going to just take over after uh, Ben retired but uh see that's not the case but do you think that Mason was overlooked and does he really have a chance of being the starting quarterback for the Steelers so question there from Kevin, by the way, thank you for calling into the hotline, 412-223-6644. Um, I, I think that we've, we've talked about this a little bit, Jenna, with, you know, I think Mason, certainly, you know, there could have been things that he, there could have been more chances for him at different points. But, you know, when he came in for Ben Roethlisberger in 2019 and then again in 2021 um, at, at times, you know, Mason Ruff never lit it up. You know, there were some games that he was pretty bad. He got benched once for Devlin Hodges, and that was a very, very bad look when, when that happened. Um, and I think that, that that's been held against him. And I've been one to say, like, listen, I think that that dude has been dealt some some raw deals in his time with the Steelers. Um, but I also think that they're giving him a legitimate chance this year if he if he takes the deal to come back. I think part of the reason everyone's kind of saying Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett right now is because he's the him and Mitch Trubisky are the only ones under contract right now, and it's no guarantee that Mason Rudolph's just going to take whatever deal the Steelers hand him after he had three really strong games to end the regular season and then played in the playoffs against Josh Allen. Um, I think that there's going to be, and you and I talked about this too. Teams are probably going to offer him deals this time around just to, to, to join them in free agency. And it'll be up to him to see if, if he wants to go with those deals or stick with the Steelers. The Steelers definitely want him back. Uh, you know, I think him, uh, uh, Pickett, and then either a rookie quarterback or another veteran they sign in free agency would make a good guy because I think they're cutting Mitch Trubisky. But I, I, I feel like you could certainly say – Rudolph was overlooked, you know, when the first year Ben Roethlisberger was gone, they signed Mitch Trubisky, they draft Kenny Pickett, and Mason Rudolph really didn't get a chance uh, to prove himself too much there. I mean, he had a chance in training camp, didn't do it, and that was that. Um, but do you feel like Mason has been completely overlooked, and do you feel like that in the talk of the Steelers' offseason plans, he's being overlooked right now? Well, it was really interesting because I feel like you look at when he was a quarterback in 2019 and now and when he had the opportunity to start and what we saw from him in those final three games of the regular season and, of course, uh, the – for one, the playoff game, he felt like a different quarterback. He looked like a different quarterback. And that mm -hmm. was something that he said, too. He's like, I feel like I'm a different guy compared to where I was a couple years ago. Hold on. Absolutely. Everybody's talking at work, so I'm going to move a little bit. Please hold. I'll keep <laughs> going. I'll walk and talk. We can do that. Um, but the uh, 
you're good. I get up. People are apologizing. It's okay. Um, I should have just gone to the spot that I normally go. It, it, it's fine. Um, this is live podcasting, baby. Let's go. Live, this is live podcasting, and we're talking about quarterbacks. But Mason himself said he felt like a different quarterback, and we saw that. He said he learned a lot from the time that he was able to sit and watch and understand and just kind of you know, see the game in a little bit of a different way. When I sat down with Art Rooney earlier this week as well, he mentioned, you know, and I'm not entirely sure how much new information this is, but um, that they've started conversations with Mason Rudolph. And of course they want him back, which is something that we did know, but felt very intriguing that he said, you know, we've begun these conversations. They want to bring him back again. It is just going to be a matter of if he decides he wants to come back or not. And if he feels like he's going to have the opportunity to be able to have a fair competition. That's my one little bit of, I guess, concern, just because, again, you go back to the picket talk. There's so much yeah. Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett. Mike Tomlin says at the end of the season, you know, Kenny Pickett's going to be our starter, but he's going to have competition. I think if there is a competition and it comes down to the wire, like I expect it to, and Kenny and Mason are kind of both on that even level playing field, the Steelers are probably going to want to go to Kenny. So I think there's a lot more that Mason has to take into his decision-making process here when he decides, does he want to do this? Does he not want to be a part of this? Um, mm -hmm. How is that all going to work? But I, I, I feel like part of it probably, I think it was just timing more than actually physically being overlooked. And when he got his opportunity, again, what we saw at the end of the season he made the most of it. So I also think there's a chance too. another team is going to say, Hey, look, we That's want you to come here and compete for our starting job, whether they have a young quarterback, whether they have a guy that just might not be their type of guy that they think that is going to be their franchise guy, and you can create that competition. I think he's going to make sure he's just going to go somewhere where the competition can be truly fair. And I don't entirely know if that's going to be the case with the Steelers, just based on taking Kenny in the first round, you have to put stock into Kenny in that way. No, I feel you on that. I, also, I, I, I think the Steelers, though, I think after last year, they're kind of at the point where if Kenny Pickett doesn't prove it, they're not just sticking with him. And yeah, I, I think they kind of showed that when they stuck with Mason Rudolph at the end of the season and said, we're riding the hot hand. I think if like these two show up in training camp uh, um, and, and, and you know, Mason Rudolph lights it up and Kenny Pickett doesn't, even if he just does OK and Mason Rudolph outperforms him, I think that they'll give the job to Mason Rudolph there. And they should. And if they don't, they're making a, a big mistake there. But make no mistake, like. Mason Rudolph wasn't lighting up training camps. Like that's the no. thing. Like he was doing okay at times and bad at others. So like yeah. the, it, it wasn't like they, like he was just, you know, lighting up with every touchdown against the third team defense. Uh, and that's the other thing he was facing third team defenses. It wasn't like he was lighting things up you know, every training camp practice. And the Steelers were just like, meh, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, he, he also, you know, had a, had a part in that. Um, and also, you know, you go back and you look at the times that he got chances after the 2019 season, you know, he got to play the season, the regular season finale against the Browns in, in, uh, in 2021. And, you know, the Steelers lost that game. He threw for 300 yards, but his completion percentage was under 60%. You know, that was kind of here nor there. Then he tied the Lions in 2021. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, again, I'm not going to say that he didn't, that there certainly weren't things that were harder for him to achieve, but. I also think that, you know, he's gotten several chances to prove he can be the guy. And I think the best the best times he's shown it was this past year, was, which yeah. I which I correct me if I'm wrong, that was his what fifth, sixth year in the league. So yeah. you know, he's a sick he's he's gonna be a seventh year veteran. That's very different from a guy who was in his second year in Kenny Pickett, which I think is where why the Steelers are where they are. Yeah, one quick little note that I found super interesting when I was sitting down with Art Rooney was I asked him, you know, we had talked about a ton of things, but we had talked about, we had just talked about Omar in the first draft class. And I said, what in your mind is the biggest area of need for this team positionally right now? I tweeted this video out. He immediately said, quarterback play. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure we get quality play of the quarterback position. I think we saw that when Mason did what he did at the end of the year. I think we saw what team we can be with that kind of play at the quarterback position. And that kind of took me back a little bit because I was like, I expected, you know, something about the defensive line. I expected right. something about interior linebackers just based on the injuries and the age of those two groups that we saw throughout the season. But 
I, the immediacy where he said, we need better quarterback play. And then he went to Mason. He did come back at the end of that quote and say, um, I think that's the key going forward, developing Kenny and having him take that next step. But the fact that he said, we need better quarterback play. And then immediately said, we saw what Mason can do. We saw what this team is capable of when we have a quarterback like that. That was just something that was very like my ears perked up a little bit. I was like, huh? Interesting. Absolutely. Again, I, I don't think this if the Steelers can if Mason Ruff signs with the Steelers, I don't think that he'll be in a position where it's just Kenny's job and that's and that's that. I think that Kenny's gonna be in a position where if Mason Ruff outperforms him, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So that's gonna I think that's that that's gonna be that situation. We got another caller here though. Tevin from Philadelphia has an interesting point of view to to question about Arthur Smith and his time with the Falcons. Here's Tevin. Hey Chris, this is uh Tevin from Philadelphia. Uh my question is uh Related to the um, OC hire, I actually like the hire. Um, why aren't anybody speaking about the actual context to Arthur Smith's three years? He didn't have Kyle Pitts for the rest of the 2022 season. Ridley was suspended in 2022. So, wouldn't that offense would have been better in those uh, two years after giving away Matt Ryan? starting to starting the 2022 season. Thank you. I'm out. So thank you, Tevin, for your, for your call in question. And I think Tevin brings up some good points here about Arthur Smith's time with the Falcons. And listen, it doesn't excuse, you know, them going seven and 10 every year, just, you know, if you, but the point was, was, you know, why didn't, you know, a lot of people have question, well, why are they hiring a guy, Arthur Smith, who his offense was very mediocre or bad for the, for the Falcons when he was head coach there. And, you know, we've already kind of explained head coaching and offensive coordinator. Those are two different things and, and head coaching, you got to do more overseeing and offensive coordinator. You could have more hands-on experience and hands-on work to make sure the offense hums at the rate that you want. But to Tevin's point, people, I think overlook, there's a lot, the Falcons had a lot of other problems than just maybe the head coach wasn't good uh, for, for, for their issues that year. And that's, again, not to make excuses for Arthur Smith, but that was a guy who, when he was hired in 2021, the Falcons had just paid uh, Matt Ryan a huge contract. And when he was supposed to build a team around Matt Ryan, they, they fired Matt Ryan a year later. They cut him. And then he was, you know, I think he went to the Colts and then he was out of the NFL. And that completely reshaped what Arthur Smith had to do at the quarterback position. It also saddled the team with a ton of dead cap money in 2022 with him, Julio Jones, Deion Jones, as just three of the big names that, that they owed a lot of money to. They had over $83.5 million in dead cap space in 2022. That is a ridiculous 40% of their salary cap that year. So you're basically saying with 60% of the money that everyone else has, you go out there and compete. And, I think that plus the Kyle Pitts injury plus Calvin Ridley getting suspended, who was another you know top guy that was supposed to turn into a superstar for them and didn't. Um, I think that there's good context for why that offense never got into a, a rhythm on top of, you know, they could, they never got their quarterback. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's always, I, I, you know, myself included, I love the context that you're putting this in here because that does give people perspective in the sense that imagine the Steelers having to work in that situation. You're not going to have the star players. If you have only 60% of the money that everybody else in the league has, you're going to have to work with what you have. And yes, that could be the argument on the other side too, where it's like, okay, well, they have to work with what they have. Why didn't it still look great? There were ups and downs, but I think part of this too, and I know we've discussed this, also really highlights the fact that there are disparities between being a head coach and being an offensive coordinator and the limitations that you have. The head coach, sometimes people just aren't entirely fit to be a head coach. And I think so many people have kind of, at least in the conversations that I've been seeing, whether it's social media, whether it's people I've been talking to, people kind of rush to immediately say like, I don't know if this is a good hire. And it's like, well, pump the brakes. And even Cam Hayward said on his podcast earlier this yeah. week, like the man hasn't even gotten to Pittsburgh yet, or, you know, he's on his way to Pittsburgh, but the, you know, he hasn't even coached this team yet. How can right. we sit here and say this offense is going to be good. This offense is going to be bad. This offense is going to be different because it needs to be, but also because you're having a guy that has the experience that Arthur Smith has. And I think that that's the key word here. That was such a big part mm -hmm. of this hire for Art Rooney, for Mike Tomlin, for Omar, and for kind of the staff in general, the front office is basically they wanted someone that has experience. They wanted someone that's able to 
be able to implement the identity that they have. That was a big thing that Art Rooney told me too. I know I keep saying, adding all the, hey, this is You're what fine. he said, but this is what he said in the fact that, you know, he thinks that Arthur Smith, Art Rooney thinks Arthur Smith came to the Steelers with an offense that is going to be good for the Steelers and good for the identity of what they want to do. Again, how many times did we hear this team say, we want to be a run team? Najee Harris practically was screaming it every single time we talked to him and was saying, you know, hey, we want to run the ball. We want to run the ball. That was what it was. And this is the guy that can do that. So I, I think you look at the way different teams handle things. And obviously contract situations can be really weird and contracts can be, you know, there can be teams with dead money. We haven't seen the Steelers, at least in my time that I've been covering the team. They're always really solid at the managing the contracts the way that they are able to and always kind of leaving, I believe it's like 10 extra mil in cap space, the kind of break glass in case of emergency type thing. So I think coming here and having a little bit more of a more flexible situation, especially with young guys on offense that their rookie deals aren't up yet or their options aren't coming up quite yet, this might be a lot better of a fit. It might not. But from what he was working with in Atlanta when he was a head coach to now, just on paper, it seems like it's a much more advantageous situation for Arthur Smith. Absolutely. We'll talk a lot more about Arthur Smith as the offseason continues. We got to talk about the Super Bowl, our predictions on the other side of this next break here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. But first, I want to remind you that this show is also sponsored by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. That starts with the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect. For, the, for city drives, and for great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistance to call on for almost anything. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, which has room for up to eight in expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability. They also have 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing when adventure calls the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure by shopping at NissanUSA.com. We're also brought to you by Prize Picks. The big game is right around the corner Sunday night. Prize Picks is the easiest, most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks on Prize Picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000. Want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app Prize Picks. We can download right to your phone and view some of those entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Prize Picks is the fun new daily fantasy game that everyone needs to start playing right now. Just pick more or less on the players' projections, and you can win today. Prize Picks also offers injury insurance that even if your play, if your player gets injured in the first half for football and basketball games, you have a player who exits the game in the first half for injury and they don't return in the second. That player won't count against you, and the rest of your entry stays alive. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Download the Prize Picks app to get today or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first spot to match up to $100. We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm Chris Carter. She's Jenna Harner. We have been uh, talking a lot of Steelers. Let's talk about the Super Bowl that is coming up Sunday night. The Chiefs, the Niners. Everyone's been wait, wait, waiting on it. You know, it's always that lull of two weeks before uh, before we see it see it happen there. Um, I, I think it's going to be interesting for sure because you got the you got the you know, the, the two different type of teams. I've talked about this on the Locked On NFL podcast with the. Uh, uh, you know, the, the talk of the Chiefs trying to prove that they're a dynasty, the uh, the Niners trying to show that they are the powerhouse, that they can finally, you know, get 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 over the hump, a Super Bowl rematch of sorts. Um, but I also think it's interesting to look at our Locked On Steelers bracket challenge group, where right now the Steel City's Lions picks one is currently in first place. But they, along with several other people who are right along with them, uh, need the need this game because the Steel City Lions have the Chiefs winning it all. A lot of other people have the Niners winning it all, including mm -hmm. myself. Um, but that was what I had in the bracket challenge. Jenna, I am taking the Chiefs now because 
I do not like what I've seen of the Niners. They're two and a half point favorites on FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sports book in America. Um, but I don't like it. They've had to come back against two NFC North teams to get here to get here. The Chiefs, they they did what they were supposed to do to the Ravens. They outplayed the Bills. Um, and they they completely roasted the Dolphins. I've I've liked the way they've carried themselves through the playoffs so much more than the Niners, and that's why I'm taking them. Am I crazy to just to be betting on the Chiefs in this one? You are not because I am with you, and my answer is really simple, and I feel like it's a lot of people's answers. I cannot bet against Patrick Mahomes until yeah. Patrick Mahomes gives me reason to bet against him, and he has not. This is his fourth Super Bowl in six seasons the man not only knows how to get there he knows how to win of course obviously you take away the one that they lost when um it was the bucks and the niners um the bucks and the chiefs oh my god i'm, I'm niners brain that's where i am but no i patrick mahomes until i have a reason to bet against him i physically can't not to mention we're always so used to talking about the Chiefs offense and how well they're operating, how good they look, Mahomes, Kelsey, the, all the weapons they have. This Chiefs defense is probably yeah. the best defense they've had in a Super Bowl in recent years, at least for recent memory in my part. But I think that the defense is going to also play such a big factor in this one. I'm so excited for this game. I can't wait to see all the wrinkles that both of these coaches have because these are two of the best offensively minded coaches in the league, in my opinion. I just I, I can't bet against the Chiefs until I have reason to. And hey, if Mahomes loses, then maybe I'm gonna lean a little bit more towards, you know, uh, I'm not so sure. But I just to me, the way that the Chiefs have played and they've carried themselves through the playoffs, I think speaks volumes. I'm right with you there. Let us know if you think we're crazy with picking the Chiefs to win this one over the <laughs> Niners. There's some people who think that I am crazy. James Rapine thought I was uh, I was I was I was losing it on on the Wednesday edition of the Locked On NFL mm -hmm. podcast. He was like, "How could you take the Niners are so well more constructed of a roster?" I'm like, you know what? You know, I, I hear y'all on all that, but that's a Niners team that didn't exactly put away the, the the Lions the way they needed they needed to, or the Packers for that matter. They needed comebacks in both of those games. That's why I'm not buying it right now as far as a as far as a, a, a Niners team that's going to go and dominate this game it's going to be close it's going to go down to the wire but I got the Chiefs winning just like you she's you Jenna froze. Harder. I'm incredibly excited to hear the end of what you had to say there oh so I was just I, I kind of was just finishing my point about the, about the Chiefs we are we are experiencing some technical difficulties with our with our internet right now as Jenna's freezing up on us but uh, oh, okay. I think she's back now. Kind of no. She's Jenna Harner. Jenna, I I'm hear gonna, I'm you. Gonna, okay, you can you can hear we me. We just had can a blast of tell, a show. This has been chaos. <laughs> can you tell people where to find your your interview with Art Rooney and all and, and all the great work that you've been doing this week? I guess she can't because it's not going right now. Um, well, this is a bit of a hectic thing. Uh, but Jenna, thank you so much Hello, for joining. Hello, Chris. Barton. Okay, now now she's back. We're gonna. We're, I'm gonna close this out, Jenna, because we're having problems with your internet right now. But thank you so much for joining us. This has been the Locked On Steelers podcast. Chris Carter with Jenna Harner, of Channel 11 WPXI. Go to WPXI.com right now, and you can see her interview with Art Art Rooney, team uh, team president and owner, uh, and all the great things that she does. Follow Jenna Harner on Jenna Harner 11 at Jenna Harner 11 on Twitter and X, and find and find her work at WPXI. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Find me here on the Locked On Steelers podcast every day, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers and more here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. We'll see you Monday after the Super Bowl here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.